Hi, and welcome back to Tippy Ashwood. We're um in the workbench. Workbench. I think everybody's workbench looks like this, doesn't it? I usually hide it with the little brick thing that you've seen around and pretend it's a little workshop, and I seem to have lost those. Anyway, great apologies for not doing videos. A million di different reasons. We all have them. <clears throat> Time, classic cars, bit of health, age, oh, you name it. What we're going to try and uh, do today a little bit is, um, if we can get this sorted out, is work on um, this contraption at the back, who now has a name, which is a major step forward, because once you've got a name, you've sort of got that inspiration to move forward. This is Molly. So uh, I'm going to bring Bob into the picture here. <clears throat> Hi, Bob. How you doing? And... Molly is one of the small book studio kits, but uh, is modified. Anyway, it starts off as Stromboli. I'm just going to show you the package that you get um, from small book studios on the Isle of Wight, who do a range of these resin, I think resin would be the right word, kits. And everything from the narrow gauge, which is actually where I sort of started. I bought one and two kits for them and saw the Emmet stuff and just loved the Emmet stuff. You get a lovely set of instructions. <clears throat> and if you're like me, you're a bit more of a model maker than a railway. If you lean a bit more towards the model making more than the, the, the fine scale railway, I do do a bit of that as well, which is taking up time. Um, then th these kits are, are quite easy to do and modified. Anyway, let me show you Molly a little bit more in detail. So the same with everybody, I have way too many locomotives. Um, and actually with my Emmett uh, Tippy Ashwood, I only have three and I only have three because I actually only bought three dead rail boards, which I'll get to in a second. So anyway, this is, this started off as Stromboli. Um, I'll, I'll give you a quick glimpse of the picture again. So I really wanted a a canopy. I, I'd seen a lot of guys do uh, this sort of stuff on, on some more serious GN15 stuff. Really like the idea of doing that. So that's an addition. I wanted it a little bit longer. I actually was going to put an extra set of trailing wheels in the back. But uh, so far that's not worked out. We're still working on that. So I extended a couple of things I've done here. I've extended the base. You can see that line. Um, that actually is just a piece of wood. I put in and leveled it with a piece of cardboard the um the top is a very light piece of aluminium i actually tried using a pop can but actually <laughs> amazingly enough the pop cans are way too thin now to really do anything and sharp be careful because they are sharp once you've cut them um i had a little extra piece of boiler piece in here and another barrel and it changed the little configurations a bit and one of the main reasons is so I can put a little coal bunker in. I thought it needed a way to have coal. So that's the general Stromboli kit and, and a couple of the adaptions that I've done. Um, I am hoping to put a smoke unit in there and put my usual fire flickering uh, LEDs in there, which I did have a packet here for to show you what they were, but they seem to have disappeared. Okay, I'm going to go and get that. Okay, the uh, fire that I got was a small kit. I just saw one of the shows. I'll show you that. Um, not sure where that comes from. Ivan Designs. So they're down in the States. Um, some of you will know that I'm in Canada. So a lot of this stuff is uh, <clears throat> based on the American uh, supply chain that I can get. Not everything comes from the UK cheap. In fact, these kits, by the time they land here with customs and everything else on it, they're, they're actually reasonably expensive. And anybody who knows or has looked at some of the other videos, I'm really, really trying to keep the, uh, the railways down to a minimum, minimum cost and scratch building anything. I'm rummaging around in blue boxes and bits of old cardboard and nobody throws a piece of plastic away without me... Uh, scrutinizing it first anyway so coming back to that that's just basically copper wire um pulled out of uh, uh you know what i don't even know small 
sort of got me onto this idea with just using buffers, uh, which are drawing pins with brass tubes. I mean, and then I, that really clicked me and thought, wow, you know, I, I really started looking at stuff. I'm not sure if you can see right at the bottom there is, um, that's just a copper staple. I had a couple of copper staples floating around and I kept a little bag for doing a step. So as I mentioned, I'm, uh, I run a blue rail, dead rail system, well now called Blue Nami actually. Um, and they're a certain size battery and chip. So I'll, I'm gonna show you that. And one of the reasons I've really stalled on Molly, I'll show you why that's happened and what I'm gonna try and do about it. So I bought three of these original boards from Blue Rail. Um, this is a good few years back now. Um, they've now turned into uh, Blue Nami with a better board. I'll get to that in a little bit. But what that board basically does is you can power that by uh, 12 volts DCC, or in my case, uh, these little rechargeable lithium batteries. And let's just basically plug the battery in. You'll see the little LED come up and that basically gives you Bluetooth. This locomotive is now running Bluetooth. I've done this before. If actually, if you watch the last video, I think there's quite a lot of it about on that and how I've put it into some of the other things. So you press your Blue Rail app, up comes your home screen. I'm not quite see. Yeah, if you can see that, it seems to be in black that Molly for some reason. So connect Molly, connect, and here a little click, and we are in business. And you get this uh, screen. You can choose different, what they call skins, actually. You know what, I'll just go into settings and you go into this little bit it says classic retro and steel so we'll go to a steel steel skin we'll go back and we've got a totally different controller whatever whichever one you like anyway back into settings although we seem to be stuck in that now i like the classic one actually to tell you the truth go back <clears throat> and now what that enables you to do is can we see everything you can see there is nothing else in this system this phone which is wireless obviously and this and um, you can start her up so you press the start up button the sound comes from the phone but i'll show you a little trick on that in a moment these are the older boards and you wind her up like a controller and Away your locomotive goes. And as I said in, I think a couple of the videos, this allows you to run on the dirtiest rail. And I don't know if it's just me, it just seems to control the Hornby uh, little 040 chassis at a lovely slow speed. Great for the, um, for the Emmet model. This model is just slightly in the background. So we'll just slow that down, shut that down for a minute. And I'll just show you the bit of sound just because. Now this is the bit that's changed with the blue Nami boards, as far as I can work out. Um, so again, we go into this, we start up Molly, fire up, run her along. And you can hear that comes from the base of the phone. One of these little one inch cube speakers, switch it on. Everybody knows how the Bluetooth thing works. <clears throat> Bluetooth note. That's probably a bit loud on the video, I'm guessing. Sound goes into the speaker. <clears throat> and not off your phone. So now that means you can get it into the locomotive. Let's just oh, pan up a little bit so we can see Molly. Uh, comes with a range of horns, bells. Again, go on my last video, you can see all that. Anyway, we're gonna shut that down. <clears throat> Concentrate on what we're trying to do. So, with this all stuff out of the way. So, it, even though G scale, GN15 is G scale, and you're working in a rather large scale. Oh, 
wobbly camera. I'm gonna show you for instance, everybody knows what G scale is, but with a ra rather large ruler, way too large, where my thumb is, is six inches. And let me just pan the camera up a little bit. Six inches is basically the top of that um, chimney top. So you have to get all this in Stromboli. And remember, I was hoping to get a smoke uh, thing in there and the little fire thing in there, which I've done in the other locomotives. <clears throat> so with Rosie, I had to build Dotty, which is an auto coach. I'll probably just put a picture in about now. My favorite views of Tippy Ashwood. <clears throat> so this is Rosie and this is Dotty, which hides the circuit board and the battery. Just so I can hide all this, the battery being the biggest bit. My idea was to put this coal bunker in the back to hide the battery, but you know what? I might come back to that yet. Difficult project, as you can see. So this is what's been stalling me and zapping my mojo, let's say. So let's uh, show you the solution. Smallbrooks also make they make some lovely kits. Um, a little wagon coach kit. I I, I like these. Um, and I'm stuck on a piece of masking tape. I like these uh, basic kits because you can't duplicate um, the axle boxes, the height of this platform. I've tried on a couple of other things. No offense to Smallbrook, but I've been looking for a cheaper way of doing that. If I can heighten things up and to try and keep everything where it should be that you can't beat these little things um michael also sells things individually actually and just buy those on their own so you can build your own platforms if you want if you want something bigger maybe you've got an old locomotive that's got a wrecked body on it, it's fallen off the edge of the table we've all had that um, and you want to use that in something, you want to make your own locomotive up. That would be a good idea. So using that chassis kit, I made a tender and uh, that went on the back of Olive. I've made these things. These are my couple of coke and coal trucks, which I decided to build my own bodies on, give them a little bit more of my own interpretation. I am going to try and use the, the chassis kit, which I've got here, which is these axle bo bodies and the buffers. Now you can already see, I've actually had two of these blocks left from other projects, which I've cut and I thought I'd glue them together. And I've made a slightly shorter base and the idea is this shorter base is going to sit behind Molly and is going to be basically a Great Western shunting truck. One of the trucks they used to have on the dockyards for carrying all their tools around with. And I'll show you a quick picture of that. So that's my idea for the, for the back of Molly. <clears throat> and... I don't know if I'll do it in this video. This probably has already gone on a little bit. That will hide the battery, the circuit board, and uh, all the wiring will have to go backwards and forwards. Also give Molly a bit of a purpose, shunting around on Tippy Ashwood. Probably going to leave that there. Um, I am in the next couple of days and I'll just add this onto the little end of the video when I find um, find a, the website for the Blue Nami thing um, their board excuse me for a sec their board has now advanced from this and having a separate sound system to 
what I'll show you from Blue Nami. Um, I, I can't honestly remember the price, so maybe I'll put the price in there as well. So it's now more of a, a chip, which is a seal packed. Um, and you can run that DCC and you can program sounds. As far as I'm aware, you can program sounds or use the sounds that come with it. All you then need to do is add the speakers um, onto that board. So I've eliminated this great big cube for a starters, which is bonus number one. Um, I'm looking for a smaller source of batteries, not having much luck with that. Um, as for the wiring, you... <sighs> One of the reasons this board is still wasn't in use, I lost the little plastic connector clip. And finally, I mean, these boards are expensive. You don't want to play around with them too much. My soldering is definitely not the best. I just soldered the two wires for the power on, took the top of the clip off and, and, and soldered my two power on, <clears throat> on that. And there was also a fault in, there was a dry solder in the power. And so this board was, out of one of the first ones I did, but was very intermittent. And I've since found the fault, so I corrected that. So it's now got the power source and direct wire to the motor. Let me do a quick... Uh, you can pause this if you want to look. But here's the blue rail. They used to call them blue horse boards. Um, the simple on and off is a reed switch, which you've seen on Olive. And I'll have to order some more of those. And you can also have charging from the track i actually was going to put a charging system inside the locomotive shed and uh when they went to bed you could just switch the charging system on <clears throat> so the wiring's there it's just never happened um, i'm gonna do a little up close these are the colors on the outside of this pin and uh, now i can't remember i always have to look up which is which but they'll run the leds which you see on olive and they can switch them on and off again using the power source from the battery it's basically a motor car running on 12 volt system so you can you know switch on and off just like you would anything you know an old classic car that's my that's my thing old classic cars so like 12 volts and leds and stuff like that is not a million miles away from what i'm normally dabbling around with and anyway, i'll show you a picture of the tsunami board and I, i'm probably going to order one before i get into building this truck for the simple reason that I might find the board is a lot smaller, gives me a lot more scope for what I can do. I might still be able to hide, hide it in that boiler, although I'm not sure where the battery will go unless we go back to the firebox idea. Anyway, that's enough waffling around. Um, I've got a few new subscribers. Thank you very much for subscribing, really appreciate it. Um, this is a, a pure love YouTube video. This is not um, some influencer channel where I'm you know, driving around in some Ferrari that someone's given me to test or something. Um, and my first love is basically model making and not making videos. But I started this, as I said, in some of the earlier videos as basically a way of uh, doing a, a video diary of what was happening in my own uh, railway and my own exhibition stuff. Anyway, go back and look at a couple of the other videos. Again, thank you very much for subscribing. You never know, we might be able to monetize this system one day and get some sponsorship, but that would definitely help. Um, so from Bob, it's uh, have a good night and uh, of course, Happy New Year. We're now in 2024. And my phone's just kicked in, but hopefully I'm just going to finish the video off with my favourite shot of Tippy Asher, as I said. And I've got to wish Carl from Carl's Whimsical Railways the very best. Um, I hope you're looking after yourself. I, I, I thoroughly enjoy his model making. He's a prolific model maker. And he uh, gives me a little bit of small credit for getting him involved in the Emmett. Uh, outline to start with but I must admit he's uh, he's the one inspiring me now so uh, anyway best of health mate and I, I promised a video and here it is anyway happy new year once again <laughs>